everybody, it's Lon Saib, and we've got another hotly anticipated inexpensive computer you all wanted me to get, uh, so I got it. This is the Acer CloudBook. This is a 11.1 inch low cost Windows machine. It's $189 on Amazon. That's what I just paid for it. Uh, so it could be less by the time you see this video. These typically start at like a really inexpensive price and then get ridiculously inexpensive as we move into the holiday season. Uh, so really kind of a basic transportation device, kind of the Windows equivalent uh, of a Chromebook. So this is kind of like the next iteration of Acer's uh, low cost computer from last year, which was called the E11. So I might reference that one a little bit as we go over uh, the course of our review here. So this one has an 11.1 inch screen. I believe they have a 14 inch version also, uh, 1280 by 800. Uh, not the best screen quality in the world, but decent enough for the price point. I think it's important when you look at one of these things is to set your uh, expectations appropriately. So uh, I am pleased with the screen for the price. I've seen better screens, but I've also uh, seen those better screens on more expensive computers. Uh, it does come with Windows 10 Home Edition, the 64-bit version of Windows 10. This is running with a newer chip than last year's version. This is the Intel Celeron N3050. It is a dual-core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, this processor is going to do better than uh, the Atom chips, including the new Cherry Trail Atom chips you're going to start seeing on some of these low-cost devices also. Uh, it does a little bit better sometimes, but not all the time, which you're going to see again when we start stepping through some of the performance here uh, as we get into it. So let's take a look at the overall hardware. We talked about the screen already. You've got a little webcam on here that's uh, adequate enough for uh, basic kinds of uh, tasks there. Uh, on the side here, you've got a HDMI output for plugging in an external display. Uh, you have power here, of course. Your USB 3.0 slot is here. I don't believe the old version had a USB 3 slot, so they've improved that a little bit. Uh, there is an SD card slot here on the side, but it doesn't go all the way in, so you might uh, not be able to augment your storage as easily as you might with a device that has a micro SD card that can uh, slide all the way in. So you do have 32 gigabytes on the uh, drive here. About 14 and a half gigs were free uh, when I uh, booted the machine up for the first time. So you do have some space to play with, not a lot, uh, but you really can't augment uh, storage without having something sticking out the side of it. Uh, there's another USB port here on the side, a USB 2.0 port, and that's it for ports. So the old one had an Ethernet port also for plugging it into a wired network. Uh, this does not have an Ethernet jack on it like the old one does, but uh, this one does support AC wireless, the higher speed wireless, uh, both in the 5 gigahertz bands and the 2.4 gigahertz bands. So it'll work with all of the uh, latest routers out there. I am very pleased with the trackpad. This is a really nice trackpad for a cheap computer. Uh, nice and wide, but also very tall. So a very nice surface here. It's very responsive. It's not very spongy or, sp or springy. Uh, it really feels nice and is very, very responsive. Uh, you're not going to get a touch screen at this price, so don't even ask. <laughs> so you won't get the uh, uh, touch interface, but the trackpad is excellent. I wish I could say the same for the keyboard. It's really kind of a cheap keyboard, but again, this is a cheap computer. Uh, so the keys feel kind of weird at the top here. They kind of spring a little bit. You can see the uh, keyboard kind of overall kind of just flexes as you're uh, poking around in different keys there. Uh, not bad. The keys are smaller than uh, what we normally see on a laptop. So Chromebooks will have a little bit larger keys than this one does. Uh, so it, it's okay to type on, uh, but I've seen better small keyboards. This one is not the best I've used, but it's not a total deal breaker either. It's definitely uh, usable. So that's the overall hardware. The battery inside, uh, they say you'll get about nine hours. I found it to be about anywhere between six to eight or so, uh, depending on what you're doing. When you do pull the power cord out, they bring the screen brightness way down. Uh, so I, I had to bring it back up again just so I could see the screen. So uh, this is the brightest setting here under the camera. It's often hard to uh, interpret it. It's bright enough, uh, but really when you're uh, dim down pretty low for the battery savings, you're not going to see much on the screen. So I found, uh, you know, with that display where it is, six to eight hours is probably about what you'll get, depending on what you uh, do with the machine. So we're going to go now and take a look at our usual barrage of real world tests to see uh, how this device works doing the things you might do with a computer like this. All right, we'll begin our testing with our usual web browsing experience here. We'll load up Microsoft Edge and maybe go uh, visit the New York Times to see what's happening in the news this evening. So we'll let that page load up. Uh, there, it, does, it does tend to lag a little bit when you have a lot of scripting coming on the page. So some of those websites like CNN and others that uh, drop a lot of uh, you know, ads and other uh, things running in the background, that sometimes takes a little bit to get uh, things up and running here. But we can go find a... Uh, article here to read perhaps. I'll click on that and see how fast those things come up. I do have this connected via AC wireless to my 5 gigahertz router downstairs so we uh, get a pretty good connection there uh, even uh, you know, a couple stories down there so the, uh, the router's in the basement but as you can see here the pages render pretty quickly and things come up 
uh, pretty nice on it. So it's a good browsing experience about where we've seen uh, some of these other uh, low-end uh, machines end up. I'm going to go to uh, YouTube now and check out my YouTube page so you can see how web video works. This will uh, be a good equivalent for seeing how Netflix is also functioning on the device. So we'll uh, let my page load up here. The video will start playing automatically so you can get a feel for uh, how fast things come up here. So we've got the video playing already. I'll go to full screen on here. I am going to switch this over to 1080p even though this is not a 1080p display just so you can get a feel for uh, how it can handle high def video. So we'll uh, switch that up there. And as you can see, things are playing back pretty nicely on here. The screen, the quality of the screen as far as color is concerned is good. It's not the best I've seen, but uh, it actually has a pretty nice balanced color uh, temperature on it. So it is pretty nice to look at. Again, not bad for the price point. And as you can see, the video is playing back here uh, just fine without any drop frames. We are going to look at uh, Kodi a little bit later in the video. And on the Octane Benchmark Test, which we run in Google Chrome, we get a score of 8,093. And that looks at uh, how well it can render HTML and process JavaScript, which is uh, what we see on most websites we visit these days. That puts it about, though, where uh, last year's model was. So we're not seeing a huge bump in overall performance, but uh, we are seeing some additional things like the USB 3 and the uh, faster wireless and a few other things like that. Interestingly, some of the other low-end machines running with the Intel Atom processors, which consume a little bit less power, uh, those are slower on paper here, but I don't really perceive that slowness when I'm actually using those computers. And you can see uh, some of my other reviews to kind of get a feel for that. So these processors are good at certain things, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, not everything. And that's one of the areas where uh, it's going to do better perhaps than some other computers will, but you probably won't notice the difference. All right, next we're going to do some work on here and load up Microsoft Word and uh, our newsletter template that we like to look at with these low-end machines. So this is kind of the extreme version of what you might wor uh, work on uh, with a low-end computer. So we've got a lot of graphics on here, a lot of things to render on page. Uh, we'll scroll down through the page here. And if you ever watch any of my other low-end PC devices, you'll see that sometimes this action of scrolling and having the screen redraw uh, sometimes takes a lot out of the computer that we're using. And this one is doing better. So again, this is another area where uh, the Acceleron chip does just slightly better than some of the Atom chips. So you can see I can resize the image like we do on the other computers there. Uh, very quickly re-renders there. So I think if you're doing things like browsing the web uh, and working on Microsoft Word documents, you're going to have a good experience with this. As you can see here too, if I'm adding text here or changing something, it keeps up uh, pretty nicely with my typing. Now, one thing that doesn't work as well on here is Minecraft. And I was really surprised. This is probably the worst Minecraft performance I have seen on a low-end device. Now, what I do on all of them is I install uh, the regular version of Minecraft. There is a Windows 10 version out now also, but, but most people are still playing with this original version. Uh, and I installed the Optifine plugin, but I left all the other settings the same. And I do this on every single low-end PC that I review. And you can see here, the frame rate is like all over the place. So we go as high as 20 or 30 frames per second, and then it just kind of drops out. So right now it's running better, and then it just kind of gets laggy like this. So there's really no uh, consistency to the performance here. And I suspect that uh, there's probably some kind of driver issue going on right now, which is partly contributing to this issue. And we're going to probably have to revisit this uh, later on. But at the moment, I would not recommend this for uh, anyone who has a Minecraft player that wants to play it on this computer because it really isn't doing all that well. But when we look at some benchmarks, this actually does a little bit better than some of the Atom chips we saw. So on the 3D Mark benchmark that we've started running on these low-end devices, we get a score of 1376. Uh, the frame rate is actually better on this Acer than it is on some of the other Atom chips that we saw, although the physics score, which is more CPU intensive, is lower. So that is why the score is slightly lower overall. Uh, this device has a dual-core processor versus the quad-core that we see on some of the Atom chips, so that gives it a little bit more of a performance boost in certain areas, but the graphics uh, hardware is just slightly faster on here. But no matter what, uh, what that test is measuring is how uh, a, you know, kind of like a triple A game might run on something like this. Triple A meaning all the recent games. Uh, so you're not going to see any real decent gaming performance out of here, even with that additional kind of performance boost. But uh, games like Minecraft should run better than we're seeing here. Uh, so hopefully we'll see a driver update that might address whatever is going on here. All right, one last test, and that is how well can it play back movies? That's certainly something you will do with a laptop like this. And uh, what I like to do is take a Blu-ray MKV files. This is the actual file off of a Blu-ray disc. A very large file, very high quality. In fact, the, probably the biggest kind of file you would throw at something like this for watching a movie. And this is working uh, just fine. I did plug in an external USB 3 hard drive just because it was easier than going over my network. Uh, but this is working fine. And I think if you are buying movies from iTunes or watching them on Netflix or 
uh, Google Play or something like that, uh, you're going to have a good movie watching experience on here. So it does that uh, just fine. I'm really scratching my head over the Minecraft thing. And I think for a lot of people who might be buying this computer for a young person in their life, that's probably a game they're going to play. And if it's not going to run well on here, they're not going to be all that happy with it. Uh, we have seen Minecraft running very well on sub $200 PCs. I reviewed a lot of them already at this point. So you can check out my link above uh, and see how it works on some of those other computers that you can probably get for around the same price as this one. So I suspect that there's nothing wrong with this computer, that there's some kind of software issue involved. So we're going to probably come back and look at this again. And I'll put the link uh, above if I did find a resolution to that issue. Uh, but in the meantime, I really can't recommend this for game players. But I think for anyone else, you're going to have a good Word experience, a good email and uh, internet browsing experience. Pretty much all the things you would typically do with a computer at this uh, price point, you can do well. Uh, just the gaming, I would caution people on. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.